Well, hello friends, and thanks for joining us on this Wednesday, um, the Wednesday of the week leading to Good Friday and Easter Sunday this week that we often call Holy Week. Welcome along, it's good to have you with us. As you may know, the invitation um, to you all is to journey together this week through the accounts of those final days of Jesus's ministry focusing on the stories recorded by those who were eyewitnesses to the event. Every day so far we've heard some of Matthew's account and reflected very briefly on what that might mean. If you miss the earlier reflections you can either look back um, through the page history um, on Facebook or they are available to watch again on our YouTube channel. Um, you might wish to subscribe on YouTube and um, if you do that and hit the uh, bell notification icon, um, you won't miss out on anything. You'll be notified by email every time um, there's new material out there on YouTube. And one thing that is going to go um, straight to YouTube is Maundy Thursday's Tenebrae style act of worship. Um, we're doing that because we've done it virtually and jointly with other churches in the Frinton area. So that's going to be on YouTube on our channel from 7.30pm on Thursday. So you can either um, check out the channel or there'll be a link appearing on Facebook um, so that you know where to go for Thursday evening at 7.30 for Tenebrae. We're going to be then back here on uh, um, Facebook on Good Friday morning at 11am and Easter Sunday at 11am, both recorded and again available on YouTube afterwards. And remember, friends, that on Easter Sunday, we're going to be celebrating communion together. So do have something to eat and drink handy um, so that we can share communion in this kind of virtual gathered but yet scattered way. Anyway, for today, we are going to return to the story of the final week of Jesus's earthly ministry. And as we do, let's pray. Lord, as we gather, be with us through your spirit. May we know your peace and your presence with us. As we walk with you, may we know more about you, more about your love for us, your passionate commitment to each one of us. May we know more about your love without limit, a love that went all the way to the cross, a love that is present and alive today. May we know and may we show your love. Amen. So on Monday and on Tuesday, this week we've heard about Jesus teaching in the temple and the temple leaders and religious authorities were disturbed about what Jesus was saying. They wanted Jesus arrested but were afraid to move against him and they tried to solve their dilemma by offering Jesus a dilemma about whether loyalty to Rome or loyalty to God was more important. And Jesus had responded by saying, give to Caesar that which is Caesar's and to God that which is God's. So the authorities were no nearer where they thought they wanted to be. A new plan was needed and they needed help from an insider and they needed it quickly. So the story moves on and for today we pick it up again in Matthew in chapter 26. We're looking at the first 16 verses. So Matthew 26, 1 to 16. When Jesus had finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, as you know, Passover begins in two days and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. At the same time, the leading priests and elders were meeting at the residence of Caiaphas, the high priest, plotting how to capture Jesus and kill him. But not during the Passover celebration, they agreed, 
or the people may riot. Meanwhile, Jesus was in Bethany at the home of Simon, a man who'd previously had leprosy. And while Jesus was eating, a woman came in with a beautiful alabaster jar of expensive perfume and poured it over his head. The disciples were indignant when they saw that. What a waste, they said. It could have been sold for a high price and the money given to the poor. But Jesus, aware of this, replied, why criticise this woman for doing such a good thing to me? You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. She's poured this perfume on me to prepare my body for burial. I tell you the truth. Wherever the good news is preached throughout this world, the woman's deeds will be remembered and discussed. And Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve disciples, went to the leading priests and asked, How much will you pay me to betray Jesus to you? And they gave him 30 pieces of silver. And from that time on, Judas began looking for an opportunity to betray Jesus. So, like the other texts, the other passages we've been looking at this week, it's a familiar passage, a familiar story, perhaps, to us. But it's also startling. It's very blunt, very bold. Jesus, who sometimes is cryptic, or at least allows his followers and us to join up the dots on our own, on their own, Jesus comes right out and predicts his own death. The Son of Man will be crucified. This Son of Man, the Son of God, Jesus, miraculously fully human and yet fully divine, this Jesus, he is on an exec in execrable tragedy to the cross. No, he's inevitably going to the cross. That's the problem of doing this life. He's on an inexorable trajectory to the cross. He's on a journey of brutality and humiliation. He's going to be executed, executed by the state in a way that's reserved only for enemies of the state reserved for those of whom an example needs to be made. But Jesus at the moment, for the moment, is back in Bethany. Perhaps he came to Jerusalem each day and returned to Bethany in the evening, as he'd done on Palm Sunday. Bethany certainly seems to be a place he felt at home, where Mary and Martha and Lazarus lived. But here... He's at Simon's house. And we have two incidents in quick succession about money and about value. In the first, Jesus' disciples are outraged. They're outraged at the money wasted by the woman who pours this expensive perfume, who anoints Jesus with it. What a waste. And in the second, Judas, one of the twelve, negotiates a price for Jesus and his betrayal. Often, friends, we are perhaps confused about what is really valuable. It's said that a cynic, that a cynic knows the price of everything and the value of nothing price of everything and yet the value of nothing. And perhaps the current crisis, the current situation reminds us of what is truly important, what is truly valuable. Only when things that perhaps we take for granted are removed, only then do we notice and see their true value. What 
what's valuable to you, to me, to us? Do we value our eternal destiny? Do we value the call on our lives now? Or do our priorities lie elsewhere? Are we loyal to things of true value or do we have our heads too easily turned? These are questions to ponder. Their answers are not always easy as in much of life and faith. But do think on them, friends, and don't forget to join us tomorrow for the story of the next day as Jesus gathers his friends for a final time and the cross comes into stark focus. The story will be part of our Maundy Thursday reflection. As I say, that's on YouTube tomorrow evening from 7.30. I do hope you can be with us then. But for now and for today, we close with a prayer. May God bless us as we journey with him. May we know God's presence even when everything is uncertain. May we have his courage when we're called to change. May we have his strength when we're called to stand firm. And may we have his wisdom to know the difference. May God bring his fruit through us and in our lives and in our church and in his world. Amen. Thanks again, friends, for joining us. See you all again very soon. But for today, bye for now. Goodbye.